welcome back to another moving rendition of projects I do not have time for. But I couldn't really pass this up. It was just neat. I've never seen anything like it. I picked this up uh, last night off of Facebook Marketplace. This is a SRAM 35-H. A NUMA Power 35-H. Uh, the story I got with it is that it's been sitting in Buddy's garage for at least 20 years without being touched. It looks to be all there. It looks like they just quit using it one day and let it sit. So There's still a little bit of varnished gas in the tank and this battery on here that's corroded all over the place. I'm going to see if there's a year on that battery when I remove it and that'll really tell the tale. See how old this thing is. Or how long it's been sitting anyways. I believe the year of the unit somewhere around the 1950s. There's very little I could find about them online. But this unit, it's got a 20 gallon tank and it puts out 35 CFM at 1800 RPM. So. It's the neat thing about this. I've never seen anything like it. That's why I decided to pick it up. Uh, it's a Wisconsin motor. That they just, all right, this is your regular ignition side, it just runs like a normal motor. And then the other side, they change the heads on and uh, did some other janky stuff. And that's the compressor side. So it's a four cylinder, two cylinders run the motor, two cylinders run the compressor. So that's pretty neat, something different. Now I gotta figure out how to get it off the truck because it weighs about 800 pounds. And I don't have any equipment here right now. These are pretty corroded. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need new terminals. I'll give this a shot at just prying these off. Yeah, that worked way better. Those terminals are too nasty to even try messing with. This one seems to be on here a bit better. Here we go. Yeah. Over here's the tag that tells us when this battery was sold. So it looks like it was sold on uh, February, March, April, May of 86 I can't read these two but that says 87 and 88 so that's got to be 86 yeah so uh, battery's been in here a while foot of room in here that's like wow that's really great well there it is inside finally that gives you a little better perspective on the size that's it part bricks next to a Lincoln Ranger 225 which isn't exactly a small welder I love the styling on this thing man it's so rounded over and everything even these cast badges that they have on the side they put them right on the curve so they're nice and rounded just neat looking
Now, typically, the, one of the first things I would actually do on something like this, because it looks like it just got shut down and put away 30 years ago and hasn't been touched. And it's been stored inside, so it's in good shape. Um, normally, the first thing I would do is drain this varnish out of the fuel bowl and the fuel tank, take the carb off and clean it. But I pulled the dipstick on this thing, and the oil is just some sort of thick like really really thick so actually I'm gonna pull the drain plug here and let this kind of drain while I am messing with everything else because I've got a feeling it's gonna take quite a while to drain and I'd like to try and get all of it out of there at once I would actually normally try to get it running with the original oil in it as long as there's no signs of water I'll run it with the original oil in it that way I can get it good and warm and then I'll change it and that'll drain out all the sludge and crap so what I'm actually gonna have to do this time is two oil changes because I know I'm not gonna get all the sludge out this time I'll let it drain and then I'll have to let it run with the new oil for a little while get it warm and do the same thing so drain it back out of there and hopefully get all the crap but anyway let's get started That ain't good, that ain't what we wanted. I'm gonna have to get a something to hold this fitting, the whole pipe fitting's unscrewing out of there. I need that. She is not gonna give up the schmoo without a fight. There we go. Now, release the schmoo. Oh, well, not as bad as I was expecting. Definitely not good though. Time to take this top cover off of here so we can gain access to the carburetor and the back of the fuel tank. The covers off aside from some cobwebs and some peeling paint on the back of the gauges here everything looks pretty good uh, I see this intake boot here has got some tape around it looks like camouflage duct tape or something so that's one thing uh, it looks also as though I'm seeing there's some sort of resin built up here I'm betting what that is was fuel was leaking out of the carburetor there or somehow oil from the oil bath filter came into the intake and went out whatever hole was here dripping down onto that but there's our carburetor and I'm betting money that it's gonna be all gummed up so we'll start there disconnect the fuel line uh, throttle linkages and things of that nature on this side there's an unloader over here Hmm, okay. And there we go. Here's our fuel line. I managed to break it, but it was probably junk anyway. But it had a nice swivel fitting on here. I've never actually seen a fuel line made like that. Nice brass fitting. Mmm, smell of varnish. I actually love that smell. It's one of my favorite smells of the mechanical world. Mmm. So this deal here is connected to our throttle. This is our governor return spring. Uh, but this is like a mechanical throttle accelerator. So when the com it's designed to idle down when the compressor is not demanding air and then uh, I guess when the compressor demands air something or other triggers this arm to shove forward and open her up 
until she builds enough air to settle back down. shot. Looks like something ate it. I'll have to get a new one of those. So the choke is fairly free. It's pretty gummy, pretty stiff. But this throttle should move nice and easy. It ain't moving for nothing. Look at that. I'm threaded right out of there. I would have never thought they would have threaded out. I would have thought they would have thought fought me forever. Luckily, came right out. Well, I can get to this bolt, but I'm betting the bottom one's going to be a mother. like a spacer on here which is connects to this unloader they're kind of stuck right oh there we go yeah all right we'll lay down a fresh diaper because you just know she's gonna piddle everywhere like a newborn yeah look at this look at the stank look at the varnish ah oh, yeah yeah now we're mechanican huh so let's pop this bowl off of here without any further ado. Whoa. There's the bottom of the plug. Let me get a tray. So there's the bowl plug right there. It's got some crusties on it. Wipe that off here. Er, second, we're gonna have to scrape that off. Oh, she is just right clogged. She's gonna take a couple taps, I'm betting. Oh, buddy. Oh, are you getting that? Are you getting the varnish there? It looks like a 30 year old can of Minwax with the lid cracked the whole time. Oh, buddy. That is the worst one I've ever seen, hands down. Wow. This might take some dip. Now I'm all for a good varnished carburetor, but I may have bit off more than I can chew on this one. Good God. Can't get the lighting right for you guys here. It is just beyond gummy and crusty here wow I don't know if you can get the magnitude of this one there's the bowl uh, <laughs> crusty I might not even be able to completely disassemble this today because I, I don't want to like force things apart. I'm looking at this main jet has got so much resin down in there that I don't think I could get a screwdriver to it. And if I can, the threads are all full of that resin. I probably can't back it out, even if I can break it loose. Might be running low on carb cleaner anyway. I know I got more of it on the shelf. Soak. Well, it's actually breaking down this resin pretty good. Yeah, let me let me get another can. This one's pretty much empty.
There's our nasty, nasty float. Ugh. Oh, it's not good. Not good. There's definitely stuff in the float. I need a new float. Man, that's not good. It's going to be tough to find one of these floats, I bet. Got the jet loose. Maybe. Took a little magnet. Fish it out of there. All right, well, the carb itself actually cleaned up pretty good. All the ports are clean and everything. Um, still definitely some smooth in here. I gotta scrub out a little bit better. My main concern now, though, is finding me a new float because this one is compromised. All right, there's a little bit of varnished crap in this fuel tank left, so I'm gonna try and get it out of here next. Probably gonna be hard to catch. All right, well, here's the hoping I can actually catch this. Oof! That gasket has made a good seal. Oh shit! Whoo! Yep, smells like minwax. Here's what was in the uh, sediment glass. Looks just like gas, doesn't it? <laughs> There's like a, a half inch of resin at the bottom here. Ugh. Look at that. Ah. And there's still fuel in the tank, but it's not wanting to come out for whatever reason. She might be right clogged. Might have to fish a wire. A little wire. I'm going to have to take that sediment bowl housing off. I guess. I'll try blowing some air in the tank, see if it'll come out that way. There should be fuel coming out of there. Oh yeah. Yep. He is right clogged with resin like I thought. Look at that. Ah, looks like red diesel fuel. And smells like death. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, here we are back the next day. I let uh, let some of these carburetor parts soak in acetone overnight because I didn't have any carb dip, so hopefully that keeps them clean. There's the sediment bowl housing. There's our crusty old float. Definitely looking a lot better. Juicy. 
There's the fuel bowl. I just dropped the jet back in there. That is lovely. Hmm. I think they're going to go back in there for the rest of the day. I haven't found a replacement float yet. All the ones I find are for a different series of uh, Scheller carburetors. Or Marvel. Marvel Schebler carburetors. Yeah. You see the crusty's just falling off of that now. A lot better than before. It was all resined on there. You had to scrape it off. and It was real thick. So that's good. Light wire brush and that'll all come clean. Good news. Drop that all back in there for now. The float still floats, so it's not completely full of fuel. It could still work. Might might try putting it together with that. I'll let that soak again for a while. So when I went and picked this thing up before I bought it, I was able to spin the motor over just enough to know that it wasn't seized up but I didn't want to spin it any more than that because something that's been sitting as long as this thing obviously has we're going to want to pull the plugs out and squirt some oil down in these cylinders it's got Bosch plugs in it it's a good sign somebody took good care and put good parts into this thing plugs look pretty good a little bit a uh, little bit rich you can always tell a lot about a motor from the spark plugs uh, if it's running lean and not getting enough fuel the plug will be kind of burnt looking kind of whitish grayish uh, and if it's running too rich it'll be real dark a lot of carbon build up around it this doesn't have any carbon build up but it is pretty black so this isn't running bad at all it was running good at the time yeah both plugs look identical they look good the electrodes look in good shape so that's good. We'll squirt some oil down in here and let that sit for a while while we're doing the rest of this stuff. This is just uh, new motor oil in here. You don't want to put a ton in there because we'll just hydrolock it. So just put a little bit. Next thing we're going to need to do is, uh, I'm going to guarantee we're going to need to clean the points. So, this is your cap, this is your rotor, this is your breaker points down here. Basically, this uh, distributor spins around and uh, it's on a cam and it makes the breaker points move open and closed. And that's what uh, shoots your spark. That's your spark plugs. So these parts, this is the rotor, like I said, and this is your cap. Uh, the contact points everywhere, they look pretty clean, but we'll go ahead and hit them with some uh, scotch bright here just to shine them up a bit. So here's a close-up look at your breaker points here. There's two little pads there. I hope you're in focus. These two little pads here open and close. Uh, those two surfaces in there, they get corroded, so you just gotta clean them up in between them with like a little piece of sandpaper. Or my favorite thing to use is uh, emery boards like uh, women use for filing their fingernails. So these things work great because they're real rigid and you can just stick it in between there and shine them up. I'm sure somebody's gonna tell me I'm wrong for doing it with that, but I've been doing it for over 10 years and it's never been a problem. So you can see the points will just hold that thing in there and you just back and forth until they clean up nice and if the emery board starts to get dirty at the tip you can just snip the tip off and move back to a cleaner spot after we've sanded them good we'll blow them out with the air compressor I guess we can go ahead and get uh, pulling this old oil filter off looks like it's gonna make a mess so let's get a diaper it might be a mess. It might not drip at all because this thing's uh, gravity feed drains it. Ooh. Of course, it's got to be really on there. There we go.
some long threads. A little mess, not bad. Here's why I wanted to save it. I think that looks pretty cool. Well, I just got back from Napa with the uh, the essentials for this thing. I got us a filter, I got us some 30 weight. So let's go ahead and get this filter installed. Not too bad, went on good, didn't leak. I'll take a paint marker and write on there the date. Right here is our oil fill, so let's get that off of there and uh, funnel and we'll get this thing filled up with some oil. Oh yeah, right on the money. I don't know if you can see that or not. Now, of course, one last thing we have to do before we're ready to get this uh, compressor fired up, we're going to have to put the fuel system back together. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned when I took the carburetor apart on video there, there was a pinhole in the carburetor, or not in the carburetor, but in the float in the carburetor. So if this thing isn't the right buoyancy, it won't meter the fuel correctly. So I was going to try and resolder this thing, but you can really make a mess of things really quick. So I tried a safer route first. Uh, an old timer told me that you could use certain nail polish and just put a little dab on there a couple times let it cure really good and then it would actually be fuel resistant and I didn't think so I thought for sure fuel would eat the nail polish but I figured I'd try it it couldn't hurt and I just floated this thing in gasoline for I don't know, a good couple hours and uh, it didn't eat it so short term it'll work at least maybe we can get this thing fired up and then long term if it doesn't hold out I can try soldering it and if that doesn't work I've already talked to a company I can send this out and they will put new uh, buoys on it or whatever you call these the little floats themselves the individual floats they'll put new ones on for like 30 bucks but you can't just go buy a whole float assembly anymore for this carburetor it's discontinued so let's put this thing together Guess there's nothing to it but to bolt it on there and try it out. Now the fun part, trying to get this thing cobbled back on here. I just remembered this bottom bottom bolt hole is stripped out. It's aluminum. So, I mean, there's a little bit of thread left in there. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can either put a thin nut on it on the back side here to clamp down. Or we might have to drill it out and install a Healy coil. All right, well the tank isn't quite cleaned out enough yet for me to be comfortable running fuel from the tank. So what I'm gonna do is just put a fuel line off of here and bottle feed it for now. And uh, I'm gonna leave the intake off too because the hose is bad here. That looked like a good hose to you guys? <laughs> I've never seen one do that, it kinda like melted. Anyway. So if I know one thing about these Wisconsins, it's that they all got drinking problems, so here's baby's bottle. Slip around in the old carburetor there. Good. Now we'll just uh, put a little dollop of fuel in there. I've been running two-stroke oil in the gas, too, whenever I'm doing a first start on something like this. It's been sitting a while. I kind of got in the habit of running the two-cycle fuel mix through it that way. 
it's just got all the extra upper cylinder lubricant it can get so this is a clean bottle this is all i use it for is doing stuff like this so there we go throw a little bit of that and a hail mary pass i did a little digging around the old garage here and i actually come up with an air filter for this thing nice little donaldson setup i threw on there real quick until i can get a hose that'll come over here to the old oil bath this is the this is the air filter for the compressor side and it's topped off to the line with proper oil so before we go and trying to crank this thing over with a starter uh you know it hasn't really made any full revolutions in probably 30 years so we'll use i had the right tool for this but i sold it but anyway a pipe wrench will go right on the end of the crank here we'll just spin this over nice and slow about a dozen times or so get some of that oil moved around and that might even work the mechanical fuel or oil pump enough to uh, start to pressurize some of the galleries. Turn it over nice and smooth. Beautiful. Got plenty of compression. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> oh, 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 that barely even turned over and it's tried to start. A little less choke. No more choke. I can see this is going to be smoky. We better open the door. It's just spitting gas everywhere. Probably really hard for you to see, but there's actually a puddle of gas down here in the valley. So before we have a fire, we better quit. All right, it's actually been uh, about a year since that last clip you guys just saw. And uh, it's that time of year again where it's forcing me into the garage. The inclement weather is just miserable outside and I'm not gonna go out there and uh, get pneumonia. So we're back here in the shop right where we left off on this thing <laughs> it's become a, a catch-all in the meantime as most projects do but we're real close on this thing i'm gonna yank the carburetor out of here and try and solder up that little pinhole in the float and we should be good to go okay Still a little bit of fuel in here a year later. I'm kind of surprised at that. Ooh. The bowl is on there pretty good. There we go. Look at all the sludge we still got in our carburetor. Now that's kind of funny. It's like this carburetor just is determined to be gross. Actually, the uh, float repair job here looks okay. I don't hear anything in the float. Huh. Interesting. So that nail polish trick seems to have worked. Well, I guess we're just going to go ahead and clean everything again real well. Because I can see it's pretty crusty again. And uh, go from there. Oh, 
try to be smarter about this this time and uh, it's it's kind of a pain to install it's really hard to get the bolts started on this carburetor so I'm gonna go ahead and chuck it up in the vise here and we'll hook some fuel up to it and if it starts leaking fuel then uh, we know we still have problems I didn't see any issues in there uh, I put my mouth on the inlet and kind of blew on it and closed the lifted the float up and closed the needle off and it you know it didn't seem like it was letting any air through so hopefully it uh, does the same with fuel well I'm glad I did that because after having the bottle on it filling up the bowl here uh, after a minute or so you can see the gas is just leaking straight past the bowl seal, the bowl gasket. And uh, I'm surprised at that because the gasket actually looks really good. So I guess we'll pop the bowl back off of there and try to make one. Uh, you can't really go readily buy parts for this carburetor. It's very old and very obsolete. I mean, I might be able to find a gasket kit for it, but I'm trying to fix it now. You know, this gasket's it's pretty thin. Hopefully I'll be able to make one. Well, third time's a charm, I guess. I uh, cut that paper gasket and put it on there and put the fuel to it and it still leaked, so I ended up uh, taking it back apart and put a thin coating of uh, Permatex number two on both sides of that gasket, stuck it back on there, cranked it down, and uh, I've had the fuel go into it for several minutes now, and not a drip or a wet spot, so uh, it's good enough for me. All right, here we go. I got the carburetor tightened back down in there, everything's hooked up, threw an air filter on it, got a temporary tank rigged up over here, so nothing to it but to do it, I even have a fire extinguisher standing by, I keep getting bad vibes from this thing for some reason, like there's no reason it would burst into flames, but for some reason I have that vibe on it, okay, here we go. Turn the choke off, see what happens. Oh, buddy. I'll give that another shot. I accidentally had the, uh, air valve closed so it was building up air pressure fighting the starter Well, it was actually running pretty good here, but uh, it wasn't leaking when I started it. It wasn't leaking any fuel, and then once it started running, it uh, started spraying fuel out of that bowl. So uh, that's a bit odd. 
at any rate, that's not good. Maybe that's why I'm worried about this thing bursting into flames. But, uh... Well, I think I'm going to call that the end of this episode. Uh, I don't have any material here to better fix that carburetor gasket. And it's leaking dangerously down into the uh, hot engine and spraying around onto a hot exhaust manifold. So, we don't need to burn the place down. I bought this thing because I just thought it was so cool and so different. And I've never seen another one like it. So... Uh, if you guys know anything about these, drop it down in the comments. Definitely appreciate any information I could get on these. The next time we visit our air compressor here, we're going to go ahead and get the carburetor squared away. We're going to get, uh, get it running nice, make sure it's making air correctly, make sure the uh, kick-out valve, or whatever you want to call that, the uh, air-actuated throttle, we're going to make sure that's all working correctly. And uh, we'll button everything back together and uh, clean up some of this acid that's made a mess back here on the back of this thing and uh, put a battery on it and uh, hopefully see what this thing can do. I have some small jackhammers that I think this uh, this compressor is actually rated to run so that'll be pretty fun. I actually don't even have a compressor big enough to run the jackhammers. I just acquired the jackhammers at an auction or something so uh, that'd be cool to get those going too and uh, I, jackhammers are a hateful thing but they are nice to have if you need one you know beats a sledgehammer so Anyways, guys, if you like the video, if you like this old antique equipment and stuff like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you haven't already. It helps the channel out, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.